So our nature paper uh, really shows that that people and animals can first travel through the interior ice-free corridor after 12,600 years ago. And secondly, it tells us about the biological history of the interior ice-free corridor, which is very poorly known. And uh, we can simply see how does the environment change. It started as a barren ground, you know, with nothing really, animals or plants, becoming a steppe environment roamed by mammoth and bison, turning into open forest land of populus with elks to finally become the boreal forest that we know today, where we see things like moose hanging around. So in many textbooks, school books, you can see like an era going from Siberia into Alaska through the interior ice-free corridor and down to the southern parts of the Americas. And this reflecting how people believe humans were basically populating the Americas. Uh, and namely through this interior ice-free corridor. But uh, our study shows, well, this is not possible for the first peoples in the Americas to have taken this route simply because it wasn't biological viable before 12,600 years ago. And whether you are believing in people getting into the Americas, you know, uh, 14, 15,000 years ago or 13,000 years ago, they cannot have taken this route because there was nothing to live from. And we are talking about a migration of 1,000, approximately 1,500 kilometers, right? Where you have to pass through a corridor with two massive ice caps on each side. So you have to have something to live from during that time. You have to have fuel to burn, for example. And this is just not possible, even though it's physical open at 13,000, it's just not biological viable before 12,600. And that's after we see clear evidence of human presence south of these ice caps. So they must have taken another route. It's definitely possible, and I think also very likely, that the interior ice-free corridor has been used later on, you know, after 12,600, when it's still a steppe environment and also with open forest, that people could have traveled either from the north into the south at that time, or from the south for that matter, back into the north of Alaska, but not before 12,600. So the novelty here is that we have not only done pollen grain studies, which is kind of the classical way of looking at how uh, plant community is changing through time, but we have also done environmental DNA studies, metagenomics, where we basically retrieve DNA sequences from these uh, core samples, lake core samples. I mean, it's ancient sediments that is from lakes that were all already lakes at the time where you had the interior ice-free corridor. And there we can basically retrieve this DNA and then from the DNA, amplifying the DNA, and then, in principle, describe major components of the entire ecosystem. Everything, we're describing everything from bacteria, protists, to the arrival of fish, birds, mammals, you know, grasses, trees, etc. You're getting the whole range of biological species that was present in this area through time. I mean, to be honest, we really don't know for sure at this stage uh, what exact route people were taking now where the ice free corridor doesn't seem to be a possibility. But I think the most likely is a west coast route, I mean, where they're bypassing the ice caps uh, through the sea, so to speak, uh, along the uh, west coast of North America. And also because there's some evidence suggesting that a small, small, tiny land bridge was exposed a little bit a few thousand years before the opening of the interior ice-free corridor towards the west, I mean, along the west coast, right? So I think it's a very reasonable assumption uh, that, that people came through that route either by boats or potentially by land or a combination of both. But I think in order to really make that argument, we need to conduct a study very similar to what we did for the interior ice-free corridor along the west coast. There are the challenges that most of that landmass is under seawater today, but going to the islands of today that was actually part of, you can say, the mainland at the time, we could potentially do something similar and try to investigate was this really a feasible route at all. I think the Americas is, uh, has a lot of interest in terms of reconstructing uh, human history 
because of, of two things really. One is that it's the last continent to be occupied by humans. So it means if we can't understand how it happened in the Americas, I think we have very little hope really to understand what happened in the rest of the world. Uh, but, but also secondly, I mean, the, 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 the Native Americans are representing a group of people that uh, really don't exist any longer in what we call the old world, right? I mean, Asia and, and Europe. So it's also a bit of a mystery. I mean, who are these people? Where exactly did they come, uh, come from? How did they come about, you know? And uh, so from that perspective, it's, it's kind of a very unique group, also genetically unique group of people that of course has relatives. We know that in the old world, but where you don't really find as such, genetically speaking, Native Americans today in the old world. So it's a bit of a puzzle what happened to these guys, where do they come from, etc. right? And of course, that's fascinating uh, for scientists.